Nation. Let's go. You. <laughs> you know that sound and what that means. Yeah. Uh, coming Boys to you guys are back in town. Live from the Toyota Lounge. Driven by your front range Toyota stores. Toyota, the official vehicle of DMVR. It's the DMVR pregame show. The tripod back together again. Pew! The boys are incredibly back in town. Yes. yes. Masters is on TV. The weather's so great outside. RK turned down several golf invites to be here. <laughs> That'd be a true. better day. I did. I turned down three invites to play golf today. Wow. A and strong. one of them would have been free. And another uh, sacrifice or commitment I'm making is I took the Masters off the TV today. Yesterday, it was too distracting. I didn't feel like it was my best performance. <laughs> so today, I'm <laughs> dialed back in. It's all right, man. I love the sacrifices you're making. Yes. I, I, I actually do, too. Yeah. Shows it's my own stuff. personal willpower. It really you know? does, because golf is your thing. It is. It says something like that in the, on a wall in the Champion Center. It's like, are you willing to sacrifice everything or something like yeah, that? Yeah, that, that is true. Does. That is true. So we're locked in. Locked in. And it's just April. Where do you see him in August? <laughs> it is a beautiful day out here, though, Oh, by my the God. Way. 80. Yeah. yeah. Great day for golf if you got invited to it, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's up, Unc? Uh, what's it been like at the facility so far this week? I mean, it's been cool. Uh, I, that little bit, that slight spring break rust got knocked off. You know, we are well over halfway now. Got 15 practices. The 15th is the spring game, so really only 14 practices, and eight of them are in the books. It feels like it's more than half over. <laughs> that spring break really yeah, yeah, it throws extended off, this thing. Yeah, It throws you off. You're, uh, you're classing it up today with the collar. You know, the master's on, man. I just, <laughs> wanted, I just wanted to rub it in. I just wanted to feel Augusta, you know, just yeah. walk around, you know, check out the greens, what's Tiger doing, that kind of buzz. Tiger's hanging in there. He is, man. You know, father time is undefeated, particularly when your back hurts. Yes. So I'm, I'm just proud of the guy for being out there. Uh, for real. And I'm, I mean, on pace to make the cut. So let's go, Tiger. You know, play the weekend. I guess we'll just do what we did last time. Just throw some names at Unk, see what you can uh -oh. tell us about them. Real quick, someone asked who's on RK's shirt. This is J.R. Smith. <laughs> J.R. Smith. Earl Smith Jr., as some know him. Uh, this is commemorating his golf career at North Carolina A&T. That's right. Aggies. Yes, HBCU pride. Aggie pride. Yes, sir. The old JR. I sent a buddy of mine, fraternity brother, line brother of mine, Hiawatha Northern. He's coming out for the spring game. Y'all will meet him. Hell yeah. I sent him the classic LeBron doing this to JR Smith <laughs> because he told me something that he messed up on and my only reply was like, man, how? Like, how did you like? It was a layup. JR was legitimately one of my favorite players ever, and I was so sad when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> because, it, like, you know, that, that was always the knock on him. Is he oh, yeah. not dialed in all the time. Yep. And then he made that mistake, and I was like, My no, favorite JR. JR is Championship Rage shirt oh. off JR. So yeah. That man didn't wear a shirt for, like, three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so much respect for that. I love it. My favorite JR moment is the uh, famous Twitter direct message screenshot. <laughs> I don't, you know I don't know. No, I don't. You're I don't. trying to get the pipe? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jake he's the went, best. Jake went there. He's the best. He's Shout the best. out to J.R. Smith, yep. North Carolina A&T golf team. All right, let's get into, let's get into it, man. Let's go. <laughs> the buffs here. We've heard a lot about DJ McKinney, uh, especially this week. We just talked to Kevin Mathis yesterday. We talked to DJ yesterday. But Coach Prime has really taken him under his wing, kind of given him a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching from what we've seen from mm -hmm. Well off the pregame show, reach the people. What have you seen from him so far, just in practice and interacting with the guys? Man, I think that he's one of those players, one of those uh, portal guys, where you got more than you thought you were going to get. Uh, you know, sometimes the portal can be buyer beware. Uh, and when I say buyer beware, I don't mean like NIL stuff. I mean, like when you go get a used car and you love the way it looks. But, you know, the fact is, it's a used car. Mm -hmm. There's some risk involved. And, and that's kind of how the portal can be. Uh, but you have these expectations, you know, of what you're getting in a player. And then there are times, man, when it just exceeds those expectations. Uh, and not just his physical talent back there in the secondary. The leadership, you, you think he'd been here three years and known Coach Prime and everybody else, you know, two or three years. He's vocal. He's helping get people in the right places. He's extremely coachable. 
and he's physically, you know, gifted to, to yeah. do the job. So uh, I'm looking for big things from him. Uh, and also uh, Hodge is the same way. You know, they just – they click, man. They fit their work ethic, their leadership ability. They look like they've been here before. While we're on the, the uh, topic of defensive backs, uh, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but I'd love to get your perspective on it. Mm -hmm. um, the idea of practicing Travis in the slot during the spring. Yeah. Um, just kind of your thoughts on – that move and what it may mean moving forward. I think some people can look at that and, and overthink it and think that, you know, Jimmy Horn Jr. is going to be on the bench and, and Travis is going to play in the slot. On defense? I'm talking about defensively. I got you. Oh, okay. But I'm, going, I'm going both sides both of sides, the ball. Okay. What you're going to see on, on both sides of the ball, defensively and off, offensively, is Travis moving around a lot mm -hmm. so that the opponent – can't factor in the Travis Hunter factor, you know. Yep, yep. He's not going to always play out there to X. He's not going to always just cover the slot of their best receiver. You want to, like, even pre-snap see Travis moving somewhere, yep. you know, to, to throw people off. So uh, you're going to see him covering, you know, the slot on defense. You're going to see him covering outside on defense. Uh, you're going to see, you know, Travis blitz on defense because <laughs> uh, that speed and the jumping ability, he can bat down every damn ball that's thrown his side. Uh, he's going to be moved around a lot, man. Yeah, well, and you talking about moving him around on offense, I think is exactly why they're moving him around on defense. The reason I say that is if you're playing a team that doesn't have versatile corners and you start Travis outside and then motion him into the exactly. slot, well, now you might be able to get an, an advantageous matchup with Travis against their nickel or whoever it may be, and you could love that. I think the Buffs practicing Travis on defense in the slot is for the reason that you can't do that to him uh if, if if he's locking down your number one wide receiver during a game you're saying okay we got to get him some touches maybe we'll move him into the slot they i think in a perfect world they love to just be able to say travis follow him into the slot and for the same thing preston hodge who you love in the slot mm -hmm. you're saying hey are you you know you're comfortable moving outside now if travis is going to pull inside i think it's just Nailed Travis it. being a matchup nightmare, really, too. I mean, he's your best player. Yep. And if someone's giving you issues out of the slot, being able to just move your best player down there and shut that down and force the other team to go find something else is massive. How much did the slant kill us last year? I mean, there was a few games they lost just because of the slant. <laughs> slant and drag. Yeah. And Travis is one of those guys from a strength and conditioning standpoint that could move pre-snap and be there in time and get settled. Yep. You know, And so the misdirection stuff, the eye candy – what they called it that you could present to the offense. That, okay, let me identify where Travis Hunter is. And by the time you're looking where the safety is in linebackers, Travis has now moved somewhere else. Uh, totally disrupt the defense. I mean, the offense. You're going to even see timeouts get burned when that happens. Well, and the idea that you brought up of Travis blitzing has me really excited because especially if he's lined up in the slot, he's got a more direct path to the quarterback. And we presume that anytime Travis is on one side of the field, the quarterback is going to start by looking to the other side mm -hmm. of the field. So if, he, if, if you know, he's coming out of the left side yeah. slot, quarterback snaps the ball, looks right, well, now he's blindsided by Travis. I mean, that, you, just, you just succinctly nailed it. Like, it's so, all about getting them to do what we want them to do by giving them a certain look. Man, Travis has been out there uh, practicing on the punt return. You know, he's been, oh, out, he's, been, he's been out there fielding punts, man. <laughs> You know, learning how to secure the ball, look it up, get it in. Uh, Coach Jason Phillips has been working uh, with him on that. So he has literally been touching every part of the field except offensive line and defensive line. <laughs> so I think Kevin Mathis said it yesterday, too, talking about just the structure of this defense, how mm -hmm. they're going to go more uh, man coverage. They want to play more cover one, single, or, um, single high, middle of the field close type stuff. Yeah. What better way to close the middle of the field even more than by putting Travis in the slot like, you're owning the middle of the field at that point. If these corners are locked down on the outside, mm -hmm. you have confidence in Shiloh, Cam, whoever it is back there at single mm -hmm. high, and then Travis in the slot, you're going to have to try and go over the top on the outsides. I mean, the middle of the field is going to be a minefield. Like, you're just asking to turn the ball over yeah. if you throw it down there. And again, you know, that is, that is a defensive formation based on his talent trying yes. to dictate yes. what the offense needs to try to do mm -hmm. you know you're giving them a look to bait them into playing into your strengths uh and when you look at the way this this defense is designed uh with coach livingston you know he has just started off by getting to know the players getting to know their talents getting to know their football iq and designing the defense around that 
versus saying, hey, here's the phone book, learn it. Uh, so they've really embraced it. They help come up with the terminologies. You know, he's trying to get the best 11 on the field at the same time. And there's no stretch of the imagination. Whether you're on offense or defense, Travis Hunter is one of the best of the 11. I want to ask you about 3-6 Mafia. Yeah. Number 36, Nathaniel Watson. Coach yeah. Prime is saying he's got to find a way on special teams. What's he been doing this spring? He just brings it, man. Like enthusiasm. It's infectious. Uh, you know, we post on our Instagram, Instagram when he's when Coach Prime say, "Hey, break him down." Three yeah. six mafia, he just start cussing. You know, he's like, <laughs> like about it. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I didn't mean literally. Uh, so yeah, he's just he, uh, Nano. I think is what they call his nickname or something. But he's just all over the place, man. And he has really embraced special teams. Mm -hmm. uh, which, when you play for Coach Prime, and you understand that your head coach made a living playing special teams as well as his assigned position. Uh, he likes guys that love being on special teams. Sometimes you get people, their egos get involved. Like, oh, I don't want to do that. You know, I'm, I'm do this. This is my job. But that hasn't been his case. He, he loves playing special teams, man. You got to have guys like that on a roster. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and the best teams always do. And what it does is it pushes all of the high, highly rated recruits and big name players to work harder because coaches will love to point to a guy like that and say, how, why is he outworking you? How is he outworking mm -hmm, you? Mm -hmm. How did he beat you on that sprint? You know, you're supposed to be a five-star player. You're supposed to be a four-star player. You're letting him beat you on your sprints. You know, I, I, I've, I literally remember seeing that exact same thing happen in a practice with Tad Boyle, a coach. They're running, you know, down and back mm -hmm. on the basketball court. And one of the walk-ons won. And Tad just unloaded on the team, went one by one, and said, is he faster than you? No. Is he faster than you? No. Is he, then how the hell is he beating you down? And, you know, like, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes the players might send a glare over their way, but it's like, hey, you got to pick your shit up. Iron sharpens iron. Yep. Absolutely does. Uh, and you have a lot of that on this team. I mean, you look at Charlie Owen running back, walk-on yeah. kid. I mean, never just never damn complains, makes the most out of every rep he gets. You know, this is not like me pissing on the other backs. They all do a great job. Uh, but there are times, whether it's, you know, Dylan, Alto, or Savion, that you wanted just a little bit more out of that rep or you wish this would happen out of that rep. When it's Charlie's turn, like, he, he's a guy on the team that's that walk-on that you can point to, like, hey, man, look what he's doing. Like, every single opportunity he gets, he runs like it's the first or the last opportunity of his football. Uh, and if you get everybody with that infectious mentality and attitude, the team only rises because of it. Yep. Herman Smith was yeah. at JSU uh, two years ago for mm -hmm. Primes last year. Went and played at Idaho State last year, but he comes to Colorado now, and he's flying around back there. Yeah. I, I, I just, when you said his name, yeah. a joke that Coach Prime said Thursday popped in my head because <laughs> Herman has definitely been playing well. And I think Herman understands he has to play well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he plays the same position as Silo, Shiloh, excuse me, in Cam. So he has to play well to get that opportunity uh, beyond special teams, but to go out there on safety when there are different alignments or someone needs to come out or something. Uh, but Herm broke up a big play the other day, and Coach Prime looked around and made eye contact with me, and he said, man, you, man, Herm. He said, I think Herman's only smoking on Wednesdays and Fridays now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, Herman's man, Herm flying around. It's not, it's not the Herm we used to have. Oh, man. Uh, but he is, Herman's killing out there, man. His attitude, <laughs> uh, when he, when he's, he's a Charlie O out there. When he gets his turn, you know, to be out there with the defense, he tries to make the most of the, the four or six reps he gets and leave an impression on the coaches. It feels like every day we're seeing Charlie offered all highlights. <laughs> Look, dude, and it ain't it ain't like well off media or uh, reach to people or it's the pregame. So it's not like we're trying to manufacture that. Yeah, it's not like we're trying to make this Rudy story story happen or something. <laughs> like the dude just damn does it. If you're filming uh, the two offense and forty four gets the ball, I mean it's going to be a damn play. He j he just does it every single time. Do you env could you envision a world where he gets more than just a couple carries this year? I, I do, and I've heard that out of Coach Prime's mouth. Uh, I've heard it out of Coach Prime's mouth in front of the entire team and the coaching staff uh, that the way Charlie is working, you know, Charlie needs to be getting the ball. That's awesome. Love it. That would be an unreal story. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
not just a walk on, but a walk on from the pre coach prime era, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a small white guy yep. from Colorado making plays for this team during the season. Well, I mean, the you know the storylines would just be all over him. Yeah, I don't think I've seen Charlie uh, fumble. I don't think I've seen him miss uh, a chip or picking up a block when he's in for pass protection. I don't think I've seen him have a missed assignment route wise or a drop. It, like he is just Mister Consistency when it's his turn. Love it. Uh, we have our first scrimmage of the year coming up tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last week, not the first scrimmage. Practice, no, it was practice, not a scrimmage. Yeah. Uh, we're getting a scrimmage tomorrow, though. What are you looking for in that? To see where that intensity level is going to spike. Uh, you know, because the last Saturday practice, we got nowhere near the threshold of it being a, uh, a scrimmage as far as pads taking guys to the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when these guys get chippy during the week, you hear that kind of bravado of like, all right, we well, just wait till we can really hit. And so to see this O-line and D-line really get after each other, to see this O-line, you know, stop picking up that blitz and really be able to hit back, I'm looking for that kind of energy. Uh, but also looking forward to something I told you, Jake, uh, last week. Mm-hmm. And we did have it Thursday's practice. There were officials out there. Yeah. I love when we start having officials at practice because it starts to clean up the game. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of – "Quote unquote cheating going on when there's not <laughs> refs out there, you know that was offsides. You know you did right. jump. That was pass interference. That was holding. But when now you have people out there calling it and you start to rein in the game a little bit, because keep in mind, fellas, last year we were one of the most penalized teams in the nation. Yep. And a lot of those were pre-snap. Uh, if we can start in April, going to the pre to the spring game, particularly in August, clean it up. We got a chance to be dominant. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to. Some of this domination has been taking place during practice without officials. How does that continue if, a, if you got a guy out there with a yellow flag? What has it been like having Coach Sapp around? <laughs> <laughs> I just had to give it a moment of silence. <laughs> First is like he says, you're going to hear him before you see him. And when you're on the fourth <laughs> floor hallway, you know if he's in his office <laughs> because his voice is just booming. 15, right? Yeah, his, and his voice is booming, his sense of humor – uh, his connection with the kids, man, uh, and teaching the defensive line, but also just at any table in the cafeteria, sitting down talking about how to be a pro, uh, how to avoid pitfalls in life, whatever the subject matter may be. You got two gold jackets on the fourth floor of the Champion Center, man. No one else can say that. <laughs> like, it is unreal, man. And so when I, I love talking to players after Sap talks to them. Like, we'll be at practice, and he'll pull the defensive line to the side and kind of literally teach him some stuff and you see like the light bulb go off and I was like man what was that like <laughs> like you just had a hall of famer teach you something yep and then you went out there and did it you know like and he's like man it's unbelievable you know you got to listen to him and coach prime because they got gold jackets but just look at Kevin Mathis you know 10 year 10 year plus NFL career look at uh, uh Robert Livingston and his NFL experience if you're on defense and you ain't listening there's something wrong with you um People used to poke fun at the name of that building, the Champion Center, because obviously the Buffs ah, haven't won much yeah. since they got it. Yeah, okay. Well, there are plenty of champions who now uh, make in their in office that building. Yeah. in that yep. building. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're going to make sure that building name gets justified. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I love it. Champion Center. 2150 uh, Stadium Drive. I, I can't help but think that Coach Sapp, like, almost you – know, feels like he's found a second calling here oh yeah he's got a bounce man uh sap ain't fishing he you know he, he he's got a bounce he's energetic he wants to be there he looks forward to it uh he's putting in just as long hours as anybody else yep. you know he's had some uh some prior engagements uh that caused him to miss a couple of days and the same thing coming up with him and coach prime already walked on because sap is real involved in the uh, hall of fame stuff yeah uh you know that that Pro Football Hall of Fame alumni kind of deal Mm -hmm. where they get together and do charitable events. You know, he's heavily involved in that. Uh, But, you know, of course, that won't impact the season. Just some of the summer sessions. You know, I know how the fan bases are for DNVR, the pregame show, or reach the people are well off. You go a couple days without seeing somebody. Oh, yeah, he's And then the rumors start, (laughs) you know. Oh, it's Tuesday, and I haven't seen Sap since Monday. What's going on? (laughs) Like, I mean, he... You know, he had a speaking engagement, man. He's, yeah, he's it's okay. Yeah, he'll be right back. Um, 
I don't know where I submit my application, but I would like to formally submit my application to be Coach Sapp's golf buddy. Because I saw Coach Prime said he needs one. He does. Tell you has been uh, – should give a Jason Phillips, man, wide receiver coach. All right. Yeah, he's uh, – he, he plays a good bit, and uh, he and Coach Field, uh, Lodeholt, the old offensive line coach, play together. Uh, Sap hasn't joined them yet, but those are three Main State golfers on the staff. There you go. We got our scramble Like bags team. are at the there office. You you know? Yeah, I love it. I love that. Uh, do you want to tell the people about your wonderful Toyota? Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought he was talking to me. I was like, I don't have a Toyota. <laughs> uh, I, I absolutely love my Toyota, man. Um I, I talked about this feature before. I don't think this is like a groundbreaking feature anymore, but I still love it so much. I was driving home last night from uh, Indoor Golf League. We got the playoff dub. Mm -hmm. We're in love the semis. Um, and uh, just threw on the cruise control. It was like I was on a straight straight uh, road, <coughs> 35 me. mile per hour speed limit. You know, I put it at 40, just cruise control, and I'm just, you know, I barely have to even pay attention. I do still pay attention, but I don't really have to. You're driving in the future. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just one of the great features of my Toyota but the number one thing that I could say about Toyota is that I've had that car for four years now and I've never had to take it into the shop I won't even knock on wood don't need to no, uh, for don't. one thing never had to take it in the shop for one thing other than your standard oil change uh, and someone broke my back window but other than that yeah. it's uh it's an amazing car man I love that car uh, and and I'll drive it until the wheels fall off and they Which probably gonna, never will that's gonna be a long time from now <laughs> I was sitting there a week or so ago, and you were out, and Toyota popped up on the screen, and I told Jake, I said, I've never had anyone complain about a damn Toyota. No. When have you been driving on the highway and seeing Toyota on the side of the road? <laughs> yes, never. <laughs> it, just, it just doesn't happen, man. Yeah. So uh, check out your uh, front-range Toyota stores, including AutoNation Toyota and Centennial, Corwin Toyota and Boulder, Groove Toyota and Littleton, Mountain States Toyota and Denver, Stevenson Toyota, uh, East in Aurora and Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. Toyota is a proud partner of CU and the official de vehicle of DNVR. So help me out here. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I've never been here now 16 months and I should be a little more in the loop. You guys learned me. I mean, that's, that's taught me for, in Mississippi. <laughs> yes. You guys learned me that the mountains are to the west. Mm -hmm. All yes. Right? All right. So I got that. So I, typically I'm watching TV and I hear this range talk. Where's, where is the front range? That is just the mountains. Okay. So that's like... The mountains. So like, since we're on the other side, like the front range is just like the, the beginning. The face of the mountain. I yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So the east side facing west. I'm east of the mountain, but looking at the mountain, and that's the front range. Yes. Gotcha. Yes, yes, yes. Also, shout out to our friends over at Circa Sportsbook. Circa the absolute goats, man. Uh, you can download the Circa Sports Sportsbook app if you're in Colorado. Um, but we encourage you to make the trip down to Vegas, hang out at the resort and casino. It is the best place in Vegas. It's incredible. Restaurants on point. Uh, you might come away with a story or two from uh, dinner at the steakhouse at yeah. Barry's. Yes. <laughs> a lot of stories from Circa. Hey, we'll be in Vegas together this summer, man. Yes, we will. You going to come media uh, check out Circa with us? If that's where you're going to be. Hell yeah. Sounds like it, so... Uh, you can download the app at circusports.com. Circus Sports bets can only be made while physically located in the state of Colorado. You must be 21 or older. All rights reserved. Circus Sports Colorado encourages you to gamble responsibly. If you have a gambling problem, call or text 1 800 Gambler or visit problemgamblingcolorado.org. All right, guys. I have a problem when I lose. Other than that, I do not have a problem gambling. I think we all do. I kicked the last during the tournament, though. Me and Zan win my bracket. I've got some. Uh well, I did. I got third place in one of my brackets, which paid out. That was nice. Yeah. And then I joined a crazy masters pool with all sort. Of, there's like a lot of money on the line. So. And just like this was started before the tournament started. Yep. Oh yeah, that's ballsy. Yep. Yeah. But, I like to get in those after the cut, but like pre-cut is like it's uh, insane. Oh yeah. One of my guys is fighting hard. T six right now. <laughs> Let's get into the right, quarter. Man. Quarterback talk, guys. All right. Let's do it. We have... Shador Sanders is good. All right. Next segment. <laughs> uh, shout out to our friend. Just kidding. <laughs> um, no, man. We, we have a, an absolute baller coming back to campus. Another blue chipper. We've talked a lot about him already. You know the name. Juju Julian Lewis. Mm -hmm. Coming back to Colorado June 21st. This is going to be his third time coming to Boulder. Visited on January. End of January. Was just here... I want to say late February, early March. 
Yeah, I think it was early March. And now yeah. it's coming back for an official visit on June 21st, 2024. That is the last of four visits he has scheduled this summer, uh, presumably before he locks in for his final year of high school football. This kid is just a phenom. I mean, we've talked enough about him, but he's coming back for his third time. Yeah. The key word in that, when, when did you say he's coming? June 21st. And it's going to be his what visit? Final visit. You want to be last, man. Yep. In this day and age of college football, you want to get that last word. Uh, I'm excited about it. You know, IQB room, uh, we have a generational talent. Yes. I, I almost want to say lifetime talent, uh, but we certainly have a generational talent in Shadur Sanders. Uh, can easily be up there uh, for the Heisman. Uh, just talented, 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 man. Just his work ethic and everything. Uh, I think Staub is sitting there still at two, but that's, that is tightening up. But it's just a room that you have to add to, you know, for the future, man. Mm -hmm. And the future is now. Yep. Also, really quick, people are talking about kind of the wider definition of the front range, which is just like the areas that also, like the cities that <clears> – <throat> line the east side of the the mountains so like you could call like boulder denver you know uh whatever golden like the front range gotcha see i'm learning man <laughs> i always hear that in like commercials or broadcasts i'm like man am i in the front range yeah and then now i know i'm yeah. a front range warrior yes that's more like the front range area <laughs> What's your read on Juju? You're the one who officially put him on Flip Watch last time we talked about him. I did, and uh, I'm looking we need smarter. need a graphic for Flip Watch. Like, yeah, know. we yeah. should. I'm getting smarter and smarter by the day uh, in terms of putting Juju on Flip Watch. Yep. I, uh, look, let's just make it as simple as possible. You don't go somewhere three times unless you're really, really considering mm -hmm. doing that. Uh, and now, chicks will do it just for a free meal. <laughs> But that's different from this. Heck, if someone takes three free meals with you, they I gotta <laughs> like your company. He has been to Auburn three times too. I will add yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Look, there's work to be done here, for sure. But you show up three times when you're already committed somewhere. That's even worse. Yeah. So you know, yeah. mm -hmm. she, she's got a boyfriend and she goes on three dates with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but. It's he he's very seriously considering uh, Colorado, yeah. and from uh, the people I've talked to, uh, they think that there's a real chance here, real chance. I'd love, love to hear that. I agree. What a perfect heir to the throne. Have you nearly been able to interact with his uh, pops at all by chance, or just you know cross paths with Julian in the hallway? Just cross paths. Not not a lot of interaction. Uh, because of what we do from a, a broadcast standpoint, uh, the interesting NCAA rules, which are crazy, the the student athlete can go live, film, video, whatever they want to put out. Mm -hmm. But anyone affiliated with the school can't okay. unless they're an official signee, you know, officially have committed. Uh, so we see the recruits and it's like, hey, nice to meet you. You know, welcome aboard, that kind of thing. But not a lot of interaction. All right. June 21st, mark it down on your calendar. Juju Lewis time. Uh, let's talk about the other quarterbacks, though. Ryan Staub in particular in the battle for QB2. Um, we can even go to the portal because mm -hmm. you've mentioned, Neely, on this show that you wouldn't be surprised if they dip in the portal for another quarterback. Absolutely. So how's Staub looking? How's that competition looking first? I, I think I think he's looking good. Uh, I think he is right where, it's, I mean, from a solidified standpoint where he left off in Utah, you know, uh, he is growing and evolving. But I also think that the other quarterbacks – are growing and evolving as well. And probably one of the tightest battles out there in mid-April is that Q2, QB2, QB3 um, as we go into you know, the spring game. But I do believe that there will be a quarterback brought in through the portal. Uh, I, I honestly believe that. I think it's important uh, to have some insurance. It's also important you know, for scout team development and practice because sometimes at practice you got – two or three practices going on at the same time. Yeah. You know, I think the, the fair takeaway or the obvious takeaway from someone hearing that would say like, does that mean they're not confident in having the solidified QB two right now? And I think that'd be a good takeaway. Yeah. I think with your current roster, uh, stop is two. 
and I think the others are fighting for it. And I think that the coaching staff would love to see an even tougher fight by introducing some more talent to the room and to see if they can emerge and I. Yeah. It sounds like Staub has looked pretty good, though. Yeah. Yeah, he is, man. Uh, you know, he has got that little swagger, you know, uh, up there early, stays there late, takes care of his body, does the right things when he's out there with the twos. And keep in mind, the offense twos go against defense ones. And so, you know, he's looking out there, Travis and Shiloh and Cam. You yeah. Know? Uh, so that helps him develop rapidly. What do you think they're looking for in a QB out of the portal? I know probably experience, I, yeah, athleticism. Yeah, I, I was going to say older guy, experience. You know, because this, here's the situation, man, and, you know, you hate to even, like, put stuff in the universe. Uh, but should something happen to, to Shadur, from an experience standpoint, there's a big drop-off. Yeah. Like, even if you know the playbook, uh, even if you could make the throw, there's still a big drop off in experience. So if you bring in a guy, you know, that's a senior somewhere or, or grad transfer that's been there with a the program and been the starter, uh, didn't get his name called or, you know, didn't have that opportunity for NFL, but, you know, wants to come and know his role and be a good locker room guy, perfect opportunity for that here. Yeah. And guess what? From the guy I just described, you're now QB1 apparent next year. For sure. Like, yeah. that's the carrot on the stick, you know. Come here and learn it. Be that damn good number two guy. Help get the team ready. Be ready if we need you. And in addition to that, when Shadur is called with the number one pick next year, guess who, where you are? And I also would say, man, that uh, I think there's some portal guys out there when that portal opens on Monday, I think, right? Yep. Yeah. I, I think you're going to see that kind of, kind of person in the portal that we can go after. It's well, going to be an absolutely insane portal period. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It is. It's people are not ready for this. I don't. Oh think. no, I, they're, they're not ready for the ones that we're going to have leave, and yeah. when those names start of becoming official, people are going to shit a brick. But they're also not ready for the ones that are going to enter from other schools. Yep. and then eventually end up here. Give me another one. The latest rumor out there in the college football world is that Ollie Gordon could potentially enter the transfer portal. Hmm. Oh my God! I <laughs> mean, we just had one of the best young backs in the country, and Damian Martinez enter earlier this yep. week. We've talked about running back as a position in need, too. Yep. Yeah, I think I know we're on, on QB. I think we're looking at a seasoned QB. Uh, I would say one or two linebackers, one or two defensive linemen. And I'm talking about guys who are playing, not guys who are just on the team somewhere, but they were starters, so they could come here and start here. Uh, and I think that we're in a good spot to land those kind of people. Shout out to Coach Daryl in the comments. So like yes. QB Athletics. Yes, sir. DC. U B. Um, I think back to the exercise we did. The golf balls. I did exercise. Uh, we did a <laughs> visual exercise. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, I understood what we were doing at that point, right? And I, I got the the exercise. But now it's just becoming even more clear that like, as these portal periods come through, that's exactly what they're doing. They are just. They keep leveling it, leveling up, and you know the outside media, the national media, are always going to see, oh, 15 players left Colorado. You yeah. know, it's a shit show again. Yeah. But they don't look at the talent coming in and how, even if it's just marginally better than what's left, the team is getting better every single portal period. Yep. Yeah. And I think another curveball to that, uh, Jake, because excellent point, well said. Thank you. I think that folks also don't measure the true impact of of the person that left. And not just statistically on the field, mm -hmm. but I don't know. I don't know why we make nationally, not just Colorado, but anywhere, a big deal about walk-ons transferring. You know, it's it's not the impact in the front <laughs> operations. I'm not dissing the guy that's a walk-on. Like I would, I would cry if Charlie Offerdahl transferred. Like he's a walk-on. Mm -hmm. So I'm not dissing the category of walk-on. I'm just saying, from a number crunching standpoint, you got to really pay attention to the scholarships that transfer, and then if, if they transfer as a scholarship, what was their impact on the field? Mm -hmm. And then how do you replace that? <clears throat> old money, old movie money ball. Mm -hmm. You replace Jason Giambi with three people, yep. you know, and you come up with the same attribute. So people make a big deal to Portal, man. There are going to be some guys leaving CU, and there are going to be some guys coming in to see you, and we're going to be ready to ball August 31st. Yeah, I mean, there's only one school in the country that um, it makes news when a when a walk on transfers. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. crazy, <laughs> and it's only Absolutely because insane. they know if they talk about someone leaving Colorado, it will get engagement. Yeah, of course. All right, shout out to our friends over at Breckenridge Brewery. Uh, 
Monday we were at the farmhouse, right? Yes. Why does dude. that feel like five weeks ago? This has invite? been one of the longest weeks of my life. Yeah, this is insane. Um, I had the dry rub hot wings yeah. at the farmhouse on Monday, and I have been craving them ever since. They are so good. Thankfully, we're going back for the DMVR draft party uh, mm -hmm. for the Broncos, and I'm going to get, probably get two orders of them that time. Maybe I get invited to that one. I don't know. Dude, come through. Out. Seriously, the food there is amazing. Everything yep. I've ever had at the Breck Farmhouse is just top tier. They've also got, like, you know, bags outside. They've got giant Jenga. It's yeah. a great place to hang out on a nice day. Definitely. Today is a nice day. It is. We should just go around. We should be doing a show from outside. We should. Maybe one day. <laughs> uh, but shout out Breckenridge Brewery. Come down to the DMVR bar. Hang out with us. We got Breck Brews on tap and cans. We got the Good Company Hard Seltzers as well. Or if you're not here, well, you can find Breck Brew wherever you are. Use their beer locator, www.breckbrew.com, to find a Breck Brew near you. True Fan Travel. Yeah, shout out to True Fan Travel. I just got a text this morning or a DM this morning from someone being like, hey, I'm getting ready to uh, you know, figure out what I'm going to be doing this season uh for my travel and i just want to know are you guys doing a trip for the nebraska game and i was like yes we are and i actually talked to someone yesterday who said we're gonna have that ready very soon um it's gonna be really awesome last year we did it for the tcu game i think we're gonna actually do it for two games this year okay. the second game being the ucf game um cross country trip there yep mm -hmm. so keep an eye out for all that but uh, you know, we'll have a, a, an option that has hotel and flight and game tickets and tailgate tickets. You could just do hotel and the tickets. You could do, you know, just the tickets or whatever. But there's going to be a bunch of uh, options for you depending on where you live and what's best for you. But What's best for you is to select a package that includes the tailgate because then you get to meet us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we'll be there uh, tearing it up before and then the after party after that game. Uh, so keep an eye out. True Fan Travel is the best place uh, for these types of trips, and that's why we partnered with them. A Nebraska trip, UCF trip, because you mentioned those with the partnership. What's the over-under on you taking down a banner on a frat house again? Man, Notice I said again. Depends on uh, the audacity of the frat houses. <laughs> <laughs> depends because, on the signage, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I don't even remember what that one said, but it was so It was dumb. something direct that Shador did, and they missed the mark. But It said, yeah. like, it's okay, Shador, losing to TCU runs in your family or something yeah, like that? Yeah, something like that. But it didn't stay up long. Yeah. Well, they had lost, so I was just doing them a favor <laughs> by taking it down because it was factually inaccurate. <laughs> you even folded up neatly and placed it, you know, where S they could find something it. Something like that. Yeah. Well, it was balled up in the trash can, but, you know. Yeah. You ready, Alyssa? Mm -hmm. Alyssa's always ready. Alyssa has on like this denim shirt dress thing over there with some platform shoes. She's rocking it today. The FDP. Styling. Profiling. I'm a fancy master. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about fancy. Uh, I want to say one thing, a serious note before we get into some fun here. Yeah, do it. Uh, but uh, rest in peace to Keith Miller. Um, he was a buff uh, for a couple years there and a super super great kid huge smile uh and he uh he was kind of that guy the glue guy in a class where it's like how does this guy know everyone mm -hmm. you know anytime a guy's visiting or something you're seeing him tweet at them it's one of those people that had a relationship with everyone and uh passed away yesterday so uh thinking of his family uh his you know just uh his son i believe uh everyone uh, who's impacted by that very sad situation very sad. Thoughts and prayers. Um, all right. We're doing a draft. What is the name of this thing? Things we want to see this season. So we d it's kind of hard to name something like this in a <laughs> succinct yes. way. Yes. But what we're going for here is something that happens in a game. Uh -huh. um, we, we thought about maybe doing anything that could happen in the season. Then we're like, well, like you could just like, get national championship and you're going to have the best draft. Um, so this is something within a game and it has to be within reason. Yeah. You can't be like, oh, I want to see Shador throw for 750 yards and seven touchdowns. That's in reason, but I get your point. <laughs> you have to be somewhat reasonable about it. Uh, but you can, you can take it a lot of different ways here. Let's go. Let's do it. Jake, looks like you have the first pick. I'm starting then. Yeah. Um, okay. 
I want a Dylan Edwards 100-yard rushing game. All right. Number one overall pick? We haven't had a 100-yard rusher in the primary here. Wow. All right. Can I think I, it's conservative for number one overall. What would you go with number one overall, Dan? Hey, I'm second, man. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to give away my pick. I mean, Dylan Edwards is like, he's one of the stirs that can stir the drink on this offense. Totally. Um, he's mm -hmm. going to be on the field a lot, and there's a lot of people out there who doubt his ability to run between the tackles. Do you think that it w I would you would have been called out for being unrealistic if you said 150? Dylan Edwards, 200 all-purpose yard game. All right, there yeah. we go. I I'm going to allow you to... <laughs> Put your hand just, back on the chest piece that you already took it off of. <laughs> two hundred yard all purpose game. He yeah. only had, I think, what was it? Yeah, one forty. Like I just got the font right. You could Sorry. do like AP yards, two hundred AP yards uh, against TCU. I'm trying to see how many total yards he had. Uh, he only had three hundred twenty some rushing yards this entire season. He had one hundred and fifty nine total yards in that TCU game. Okay, so that, this would. Top that pretty handily. This would easily be his best performance in college so far. But with your emphasis, when your first emphasis on rushing, there's a big difference because a lot of those yes. were, were passing. Yards. I want to see him do it running the football because I want him to prove this notion wrong that Dylan's too small to be uh, in between the tackles slash every down back. I want 100 rushing and 100 passing in this 200-yard game. <laughs> that would be sick. Okay. I like how you're just all over his pick. And, you know. Well, I'm just I'm trying to help my guy. No, I, no, I get it. I get it. He needs help from time to time. <laughs> so uh, mine would be it's easy, low hanging fruit, and I, you know it's just number one in my mind. I want to see us have an entire game, and Shadour Sanders is not sacked. Wow, mm. zero sack zero sack game because I think what that leads to is what you picked as number one, and a lot of other things, not to mention a victory. So give me as my first pick for what I want to see this season is a zero sack game. That's going to get that's going to score you a lot of points with the uh with the people there cuz that was a sore subject last year. <laughs> yeah, no literally and figuratively. Yeah. All right. Um well, during that zero sack game, we could get mine, which is Shador breaks his own single game passing yard record. Mhm. Mm Love uh, it. That so that was TCU. Yep. So what would it, what would that be? What did he have? Four hundred and four. I am looking something? it up right now. He, he like had five ten. Oh, five, five ten. ten. Yeah. So five eleven. That's what we need to break the record. And you know, I wouldn't mind if it happened against Colorado State, but we don't have to go that far. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we just shouldn't have no space for that. So yeah, we we just remember that's where you prefer it to happen. Shador breaks his passing record. Shador breaks passing record. Yeah, that, that works. You're doing a great job, super funky dope producer, no matter what they say. It looks great. Oh, I get I get a wraparound pick here. Yeah, you do. All right. Well, <laughs> where do I go with this? It's, it's all a game of like, how far can you push it, in my opinion? Push it, man. Give me a... Travis Hunter, two touchdowns, two interceptions game. I like that. I we like that. that. That is uh, huge but realistic. Yes, exactly. That's why I was trying to figure out, like, what's realistic here? Yeah, because one, one of the picks could be a pick six. Yep. So you said two touchdowns, two INTs. That's, 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 that's achievable. And, I mean, he had games with each of those yet last year. Uh-huh. So he had, he only had three picks last year. He never had a pick and a touchdown in the same game. Wow. Maybe. Well done. Well done. All right. So if you're picking up on a pattern, if a pattern can happen off of one thing, I went offensive line first. My second pick, I'm going to do something toward the defensive line. I would love to see this year the Colorado Buffs have a four sack game. I feel like four is conservative. Yeah. You could, you could take it up to six. Yeah. No, I'm going to leave it at four. Okay. All I'm right. Leave it four. I want to see He's a four going sack for game. Realism. Yeah. Give me a four sack game. What was the most they had in the game last year? Uh, give me a minute and I can get this. For my next one, 
Neely kind of took mine. I'm not going to lie. Well, um, he could have traded up, you know. No, nah, Maybe a nah, brick nah, brew nah, or nah, something. Nah. We can't. Well, I can definitely get that for you. <laughs> um, Let me go with... Um, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Because <laughs> Neely just took mine. That was what I was going to go with. All right. Well, Let you me got go. back to back here, so you better think hard. All right. You do have back to back. Let me go with Omari Miller tops his USC receiving total. Wow. 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 So 200, I think. One, I think he got 199. 195, yeah, wow. I think it was. All right. Um, let you me double do check Omar. this. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So he had 234 in the season. Might have been 196. Yeah, 196 against USC. Okay. All right, My so you again. last one. I feel like I have to go defense here. So I'm going to go Shiloh Sanders, two plus forced fumbles in a game. Got that last year. You want to up it to three? Shiloh Sanders, three total turnovers in a game. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. That was the direction I was heading in. So you you got me back. You took one of mine. But I'm good, though. I keep something in the pocket. Okay. I already know where I'm going. Damn, I just thought of another one, too. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, she asked if you want to do five rounds. You said three, so. It's true. You know? I mean, we're taking a while here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my third and final pick of something I want to see happen this year it's going to go with the running game. You know, we want, we want to improve the offensive line check. We want to improve the defensive line check, running game. I like your first pick being Dylan Edwards specific, but this one is going to be more sh towards Shermer's wheelhouse as the play caller. I'm um, trying to pick my number here because there's a certain number of design runs I would like to see in a game, regardless of the back. Give me – and let me, pre let me preface with this. This number, if it sounds huge to you, keep in mind we're going to be so successful that Shadur Sanders is not playing the fourth quarter at all and may not play half of the third. So I want to see 35 runs in a game. Wow. I want to see 35 deliberate running plays in a game. 35 runs in a game, not per game. So they did at least match or eclipse that mark three times last year. 35? Wow. They have 45 attempts against South uh, USC. Well, up mine to 45, and if we did 45 last year, because I don't even yep. remember us running they that much. They ran the ball 45 times against USC. Mm -hmm. They ran it 35 times against Stanford and 41 times against Washington State. Washington State, they were just trying to run that damn Yeah, yeah they were trying to get out of there. Yeah. Right, so give me that. Those are my three. Um, right. In this USC game, yeah, man, they ran it a bunch. Um, oops, sorry. Hank had 16. Shador carried it 14 times. Dylan had 12 uh, carries. Oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, back out. See, yeah, I should go back down to the 35 then. I forgot about the QB runs. 35 running back carries. Yeah, yeah. Shador's a, still going to run, though. Yeah, but that's not a, a lot of those are not designed runs. Those were duress yeah. runs. Those like, you know, oh, shit, I got to go. All right. I went back and forth on this one. Final pick. Um, I thought maybe I'd just throw something out like beat Nebraska, but that's too simple. <laughs> I thought maybe even... And that's your given. We yeah, know you yeah. want that. Blow out Colorado State yeah. would be a good one, too. Um, but I think I found potentially my favorite pick so far. Wait, if your favorite is your third, you're getting a steal here. It is, it is a steal. Uh, special teams, special plays, special players. Give me a Alejandro Mata walk-off mm. field goal. I love it. I love it. Good pick. I thought you were going to go with what uh, I had, and I, or my other one, and that was going to be a return touchdown. That would be nice. I too. thought of that one. That's actually, that was a, the gateway thought yeah. to okay. the Mata. I was like, oh, special teams exist. Mata. Yeah. Love it. I love this board, man. It is. I like yours are, yours are more um, broad, like team focused, mm -hmm. where we went, I went all individual focused. Jake, kind of a uh, individual too. This is gonna be uh, this is gonna be good. I tell you what, 
I'm looking at nine things up there. If four of those happen in the same game, we ain't losing a damn game. <laughs> I was actually thinking about it. A lot of them could happen week one. Not to say that North yeah. Dakota State is a pushover or anything like that. But, you know, if there's a game where they can, uh, you know, run the ball a bunch and do those sorts of things, like you would expect it. Yeah, and, and let, me, let me underscore that because this is certainly not a North Dakota State being a pushover. They're, they are the best of, of where they are. But I, I lean toward what you just said more so because it's week one. Yeah. And that's the week you can sneak up on somebody and really run up things, you know, whether it's this position, this play, or this scheme. As you get into the season and you start creating a paper trail, a film, you know, the game, the game tightens up some. Your opponents are more ready for you. Yep, for sure. So just I like that 200-yard auto game. Smoke going Andretti. through, uh, looking at this, I don't think the Buffs even had more than like three sacks in a game last year. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, the one I remember there being sacks in is Nebraska. Yeah, they only had like two and a half or three that game. Wow. Yeah, we just didn't play a lot of ball on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Shout out to uh, JD Jordan Dominic. You know he was getting back there, but as a group, we we didn't consistently play on the other side of the ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny because I just made a sketch reference and then Brandon yeah. walked by and made one himself. All right, there's our draft. Um, random question as we're talking about running the ball. Have you seen more under center? I would say mix because it depends yeah. on, you know, if the ones or twos out there. I think there's a lot of nuances to Pat Shermer's offense. A lot of, you know, lack of a better word, creativity, a lot of doing different things out of the same formation so you're not picking up on it. Yep. Uh, it's going to move around some. A lot of you guys sending in your ideas, and none of them would have been eligible for this draft. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, speaking of draft, Buffs man. winning the Big 12 championship is not a thing that can happen in a game unless you were saying the Big 12 championship game, which that would right. be cheating. Yeah. Uh, someone said playoff Peggy. No, it's all got to be something that could happen in a game. Good feedback, though. But speaking of drafts, what do they do on draft night? They, when your name is called, they put your name on the screen. You and walk then you the put on a, uh, a hat. You guys gave me a hat to somebody sent in. What's their names? Yes, uh, they sent it from Positive Message Clothing. Yep. They hooked us all up. You got the the pregame show hat there. Looks good on you. Yeah, got some shades. Shout out. Oh, I haven't seen the shades yet. Let's see. Yeah, I haven't either. We're just like opening for the first time here. You got to, like, open the arms. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got here. What are we working with? Bam. Let's see. Up. Dang. Dude, you can pull off every type of sunglasses. I know. The frames love me, man. What can I say? <laughs> that's the frames a, love me. That's an unreal gift that you have. Thanks for the hat and the shades from Positive Message Clothing, where they inspire the world. Yes, Hell sir. Yeah. You can zoom in and scan me. Bam, there you go. <laughs> Good luck. Doesn't really work. Yeah. <laughs> we try it. All right. Um, let's get to the Toyota chat and the questions. But first, shout out Illegal Pete's. Uh, this Friday, today. This Friday. Um, it is so from 4 to 6 p.m. before the Nuggets game. The Nuggets crew will be at Illegal Pete's Lodo for a pregame happy hour and merch pop up. You can get your hands on our Nuggets playoff shirt early there. Um, I'm sorry, you yeah. said get your hands on the Nuggets, and I just went somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Go hang out with the Nuggets guys, have some Illegal Pete's, have a Marg. Illegal Pete's just the goat, man. Best place for burritos, buddies, and beers. Is there a go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and this beers? This is legitimately the best illegal Pete's day of the year so far. Yes. 80 degrees. Patio season. Stamping. Patio, margarita, hang out mm -hmm. with the DNVR, Nuggets guys. Whew. Man, speaking my language. And then Circle K, our favorite road stop, our road trip stop. Uh, Circle K, it's got everything that you need, man. Wiped out um, the snack stand. This The snack stand has been... Uh, it gets wiped out pretty quickly here. I'll just say that. <laughs> you, would, you would think that like these people don't have food at home <laughs> that work here. The way they come in here and just devour the snack stand. Let the record stand. I haven't even grabbed for the snack stand probably since the first time we had a snack stand. Yeah, I mean, I, 
I ha I think I've got like one of the like Takis like things off of there, mm -hmm. and I think that's the only thing I actually ever took something off of there. Uh, but Circle K is the best. They got deals on uh, everything really. Buy two get one freeze on energy drinks. Um, you can actually sign up now for their inner circle and get a free any size Polar Pop from Colorado Circle K's. All you got to do is text DNVR to three one three one zero. That's DNVR to the number 31310. Message and data rates may apply. Periodic recurring messages per month. Terms and conditions can be viewed at circlek.com. Sign up with that QR code on the screen or visit circlek.com slash inner dash circle for more information. Thanks for doubling up there, Jake. I got you. To the Toyota chat we go. That's oh, my the, bad, brother. That's for the double up. He's oh. <laughs> he's so locked in, he couldn't even see Yeah, you. I mean, he's, he's ad read mode, bro. Uh, well, Neely slapped this tape thing on my leg, and I've been just <laughs> messing with it in my hands all show, and now it fell. So, all right, Toyota chat, what do we got? Uh, Eric asks Neely, what is the biggest improvement over last season, offense or defense? I think both Sean Lewis and Charles Kelly did the best, uh, did their best. Uh, da, 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 offensive line. Uh, Ooh, I think the I think the time. I think the defense overall is improved. But if I had to just drill it down to a unit, I'm enjoying this much improved offensive line. When you go back and look at the practice film and the ones out there, I mean, Shadour is just standing in the pocket, man. And I'm talking about standing in the pocket and the defense is, bl is blitzing and it's still just clean. I, I love what I'm seeing from the O line. So I they get that. they get my much most my most improved. I. That's the best thing you could That's say. exactly what you want to hear yeah. right now. Yeah. And I swear, I'm not, this ain't hype. I'm not making this up. Like, it is a clean pocket, man. Of course, you know, you have plays that break down, but yeah. you don't have the breakdown ratio that you had this time last year at how, all. How about specifically Jordan Seaton? How has he looked? It's not only how he looks, it's how he does it, uh, it's his energy. And then on the other end, you got Khalil Benson with the same thing. Like, it ain't over. <laughs> Unless I'm doing a push up off of you to stand up. I saw a clip of that. <laughs> it was like nasty, that, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's when the play is over. When I, you know, forget this whistle or what the coach is saying. The play is over when I push up off of you. They're just so that. much bigger, so much stronger, so much more physical. <laughs> yes. Fast. Um, they get the flexible. Uh, those, those. But those you can just tell walking by, like, I don't even see practice, but when they walk out of practice and I stand next to one of them or say hi to Justin, like, yeah. they are so big. I've, I've told the offensive line and defensive line this. Last year, if I was interviewing one of them, the camera's like by my chin. I interview them now like this or like this. Because, I mean, it, you know, you talk to the guys that are 6'6 six, six now, not, you know, 5'11, 6'1. <laughs> uh, next one from Jesse. What does the O-line depth look like now that Savion Washington's entering the portal? Um, he's got to make that official first. <laughs> but... Um, I feel good Jesse's about it. Got the crystal ball. I absolutely feel good about it. One, we started off with more depth than we had this time last year, and then two, from the recruiting phase and portal opening up, we're bringing in more. Uh, so to those that will officially transfer, let it be known Monday. Uh, you know, wishing them the best, but I don't think Coach Phil Lodeholt is done building this offensive line from a depth perspective. Uh, I think that that front unit that's been out there with the ones or sound, but you have to continue to add to that room. Yeah, I mean, I would just look at some of the battles that we were talking about. And when you talk about these battles, that means one of them is going to be depth. Tyler Brown or Tyler Johnson. Uh, you know, you carry Walker or uh, Hank Zelinskis. Like yeah. One of those guys is going to end up being depth. Uh, and, you know, clearly a lot of them are good enough to compete for a starting job. So No doubt about it, man. And that's, that's the one thing... And I'm not mad at any guy that chooses, you know, to transfer. I, I've always said I'm pro opportunity, no matter who the person is. If you think you got a better opportunity somewhere, you know, God bless you. I want you to get your playing time and your shine on. Having said that, I think the way this offensive line is designed uh, under Shermer's offense, specifically under the way Coach Field Lodeholt manages the offensive line, I wouldn't be too worried about if I'm the one of the two. Because I think over the season, the first half of the season, going into the first to bye week, the twos are going to get just as much game reps as the ones are. Yep. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too quick to get out of here because I'm not, you know, LT one or whatever. I would, I would stick it out because these are, this is going to be a very interchangeable, moving around offensive line with depth. That's what I've noticed from watching well off and reach the people when you watch these practices. 
Tyler's playing left guard. He's yep. playing center. He's playing right guard. Yep. Uh, Zelinskis is in there at center. You know, Tyler Johnson's in there. They're just they're trying all these combinations out. Yeah. And I think they're, it's really going to be like an NFL offensive line where you Absolutely. have like a swing six offensive lineman Absolutely, Jake. who can come in and spell whoever it may be. Um, a lot of te- times it's, you know, they'll rotate the right guard in the NFL or on an NFL team, but uh, they can just do it, I think, at multiple positions. Yeah. yeah. I haven't talked to a particular lineman that's, you know, supposedly transferring about their reason why. Uh, so this is just my 30,000-foot speech. I, would, I wouldn't run because I'm not labeled as the one because – you're going to play here, man. So whoever comes, whether you're two or one, you're going to play. Anyone who's, like, worried about their position on the depth chart should just talk to Cam. Yeah, A guy who for real. Ba- didn't play yep. against TCU last year mm-hmm. and then came in and made th- two plays on the first uh, three snaps of the Nebraska game. And then, you know, he couldn't get him off the field. And then he was leading the Pac-12 in interceptions at one point. Like, you know, he didn't pack his bags because it didn't look like he was going to yep. start. He just Great put point. his head down and then went in there and made plays. Great point. Great point. Thank you guys for the kind words to say. Shout out to Joshua in the comments. Missed with the question for Neely. Can you see the impact of the new coaches this early in the year? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it is a, uh, a chemistry that they have developed uh, with each other, the way they communicate and work together. Uh, if I look at the defensive side of the ball, uh, you know, the way those coaches strategize together and, and communicate together. You see them at, you know, at lunch talking and getting on the, <clears throat> excuse me, on the same page. But also from a philosophical standpoint, uh, starting again with defense, I think that Charles Kelly, uh, as an exceptional as a coach and experience he was, uh, he had a defense that was kind of predicated on, you know, you play in this defense, you know, three or four years and you coach the same guys and we start off with here's what we're going to learn. It's been totally flipped now with Coach Livingston. He is starting off based on, okay, who do we have here? What can they do? And let's build the defense around their particular and then collective talent. So it's just a different approach to it. And so with that different approach, you see the needle moving higher quicker than it did this time a year ago. Yep. Great point. Um, Neely, any, any interviews dropping? What do you got coming up? Uh... Two things, got, a, got a, a thing with Sap that's coming up. It's not really interview, it's just kind of shadowing him and some video of him teaching. That should be Monday. And then we got a special coming out on the tight ends with uh, Coach Brett Bartolone and how he coaches and gets those tight ends ready. So that's probably Monday and Tuesday on the pregame show YouTube. Thanks for Love the it. question. Thomas asked, uh, what's up, Tripod? Defense is two gold jackets. The offense needs one. What gold jacket would you want to see join CU on offense? <laughs> he's got to be T.O., right? Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, he's here a lot, man. Uh, yeah, that'd be a good one. And, and, and I'm not talking about just full-time staff, just their presence. Um, T.O. was here a lot. I love when he's here. But the impact that Michael Irvin had when he's been mm. here – Man, shit, just come back and come back and just break the team down after practice again, Mike. Like that was unbelievable. I've got one. Uh, he doesn't technically have his gold jacket yet, but I guarantee you he will very soon. And he also seems kind of bored. Give me Tom Brady. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's go. <laughs> he got, does seem bored. I've got a. Are you done? Oh, he, like yesterday, he's on a podcast saying he would come out of retirement yeah, if like yeah. a team had lost their quarterback late in the season and they yeah. wanted him. Um, we he, gotta he get tw- a Brady appearance, right? He, yeah, he tweeted um, like fifty thousand likes and all unretired. Then he like crossed <laughs> it out and was like, "I'll grow my hair out or something like that." Like the, the man, he yeah. wants something to do. Yeah, he's bored. He's Shador's bored. just gotta tell him to come down. It's true. Yeah, How about all, Larry Allen? That's all it would take. Whew, that'd be big. That'd be big. No pun intended. <laughs> Uh, CC with the question: What other positions would you all like to see the bus pick up in this upcoming portal besides the QB? Tight end. I'll go um, linebacker. Good one. Um, just more defensive line depth. Good one. Any starter slash rotational, just plug and play type of guy. I like it. Offensive line too, for that matter. Uh, Michael, watching from South Africa, question: Do players who declared for the draft have to submit some sort of application form, uh, CV slash resume, or something like that? Thank you for the show. Thanks for watching. Um, I think it's just signing an agent. Yeah, I think isn't it's it? just Claire. You yeah, you get an agent and you you draft eligible. I would assume there's some sort of there's thing a declaration you have to yeah. sign. Yeah. yeah, but a good question. Uh, better question maybe for like 
the appliance office or something yeah. like that. Uh, Scott asked, hey, Unc, any coaching or adjustments with the hip drop tackle? Compliance, not appliance. <laughs> yes. Uh, here, here's my answer to that. I'm not going to say it's, it's specifically to that, but the way this team teaches tackling has never included that. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're trying to unteach, you know, hip drop tackle. That's just not the way we teach tackling, period. So if you do it the way you're taught, you know, wrapping up and that kind of thing, um, I was going to use that terminology, but it wouldn't be good for the air. It's, it's a certain thing you step on. It, it's You get in the guy's face. You know, you tackle, keep your arms in, and don't grab till you get there because it keeps you from reaching for a tackle. Mm -hmm. You know, so you wait till you get contact and then wrap. So all of that in and of itself deprograms the hip drop because you're not teaching it in the first place. Yeah, the hip drop hasn't been outlawed in college yet, no, correct? No, no. I... That's such a difficult conversation. Yeah. I hate it for defenders, uh, but I also understand it for safety reasons. But, you know, for me, RK, if we explore the NFL part of it, the horse collar you saw significant injuries from, mm -hmm. and it had to be addressed. I can't think of just a laundry list of hip drop tackles causing injury that regular tackling didn't also cause. Yeah, I you mean. Know, it's like it's, a it's a of kind of across sprints. the board. Yeah, I get it. I, I, again, I get it. But I also think that sometimes more than player protection, the game is just becoming more and more pro offense because they want to see point score. Yeah. The, 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 my biggest issue with it is like a horse collar tackle, everyone knows what that is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like very obviously you grab them by the collar and yeah. hold them down. A hip drop tackle is so – it can be interpreted so many different ways, yeah. I think. I agree with you. Smoke, what's up? Is there going to be a tailgate package for the Arizona game? I think so. The goal is to have a tailgate at every game. Um, there's a couple things that have to fall into place for that. So we'll let you know. And then Buffs News Weekly, what is the tailgate for the spring game going to look like? Unk swinging by in the morning. We'll see. Yeah. You'll be busy, I'm assuming, though. I will, but I, I, I got a swing by in me. All right. I got a swing by in me. Uh, TXK, State of Mind. Based on his performance, do you foresee Micah overtaking all the other running backs to become the top run option? So based on current performance, there's no doubt about it that Micah will be getting playing time. Uh, this notion of overtaking, I'm not gonna, and I'm going to apply this to everybody across the board, I don't know how much overtaking will happen because we have three backs with distinct different running styles yeah. for situations. So just because a Micah emerges and gets more carries, it's probably because of the situation that he got those carries uh, and not so much that he was just outperforming the others. You know, you're going to see mm -hmm. backs get different touches based on where we're on the field, the kind of time is left, what we're trying to accomplish, because they really do have unique running styles. Uh, Paisley asks, how many players do you guys think will transfer over under 10? Over. I go over. I will also go over. And I honestly, I'm not looking forward to players leaving. I am looking forward to, in a, in a sick way, the overreaction, the national overreaction. <laughs> oh, I can't be wait. And like being able to, you know, uh, talk about it for real. Yes. Because yeah. yes. I like the way you, you button that up. You know, the three of us are in the loop, in the know. Yeah. And out of respect for programmatic things and also out of respect for the student athlete, there are things we don't announce, so it's time to announce them. Uh, and so, you know, you, you can be aware or unaware of transfers that are quote-unquote pending just because you had a lunch with a guy and it just happened to come up. Uh, but I do expect a complete overreaction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By Monday afternoon and Tuesday morning. Because there's people literally sharpening their knives right now to be able to write the Coach Prime has lost Colorado – the, it's a mass exodus. This is a disaster. The <laughs> portal recruiting approach continues to fail. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, speaking of recruiting approaches, did you guys see that a offensive lineman from USC <laughs> forced our offensive lineman, yep. a incoming 2024 class yep. freshman, early enrollee, is already in the portal? <laughs> yeah, let me grab his name. And you wonder why Coach Prime doesn't want to spend – you know, time, money, resources, yeah. at least as much, recruiting freshmen because there's so many variables. And then these guys could 
transfer out before mm-hmm. you even and feel free to cl- include in-home visits in-home visits i was gonna say because <laughs> yeah, that takes resources you flew across the country to get this guy you got him and then he transferred six mm-hmm. weeks later yeah his name the is we jason, in. jason zandamella uh 63305 from clearwater florida come on home ranked as the top <laughs> interior o lineman in the 24 class per on three all right we'll s- we'll see you later yep there he is <laughs> Uh, the girls club asks, Unc, how's it feeling having a fellow noop in the facility now? Oh, it's awesome, man. Shout out to uh, strength and conditioning coach Stephen Houston, uh, yep. who was recently initiated into the same fraternity I'm in, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Stephen's a good guy, uh, doing a great job as the get back coach on game days. And uh, during the week, he's the strength and conditioning coach that's helping guys in their injury prevention and also rehab. So shout out to Stephen Houston, man. Is oh, it yeah. Super Chat time? What's up, Jack? Uh, yeah. All right. Let's get to 400 likes. Come on. Smash is the like button. that tripod back there? That is. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We'd appreciate your five-star review wherever you're listening. Also, subscribe to the, the pregame channel also. DJ Flame to you with the Super Chat. What's up, Unc? Thanks for helping with my big and tall order. My question is, who has more style and swag? The J5 of Jackson State <laughs> or J5 Jimmy Hart. Oh, come Jr. on, man. Well, one, you know, always a pleasure to plug anybody else that's on the big and tall side. Glad you got your order and everything. Hey, man, J5 Jimmy Horn has a lot of swag, but the J5 of Jackson State, I mean, hell, it's five of them. <laughs> you got to go with that. The Sonic Boom in the South, the drum majors are called the J5. Jimmy Horn gets them four compadres, then we'll remeasure. <laughs> By the way, um, I'm making a sign uh-huh. for our next show, and I'm putting it right on the other side of Alyssa that says, please don't distract our producer. <laughs> 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 that would be nice. DJ Flame to you. Arcane Jake, just because we live in Kansas City don't mean we support the Jayhawks or the Whack-Ass Chiefs, but please, please do a tailgate at Arrowhead for the KU game so we can kick That'll it. That would be historic, man. DJ Flame <laughs> to you is a... Uh, you're you're all right with me, yeah, man. You're up there now. So that's an epic super chat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyone who calls them the whack ass Chiefs is good with yes, me. Yes, sir. Um, I think we will. Love it. And we'll hit up Jack Stack the night before. Yeah. There you go. And for people who don't get it, we're playing a game in Arrowhead Stadium. Yes. yes. Unfortunately. Yes. <laughs> uh, Jermaine. I don't like I don't like college games in NFL stadiums. I get it. I get it. Well, you know, renovations are forcing this. I also hate the basketball tournament games in fi- giant football stadiums. I mean, <laughs> being in the top row of an NFL stadium to try and watch a basketball game imagine? sounds like a nightmare <laughs> yeah. to me. You'd be better off watching it on your phone from that top row. You, you really, I you bet really you there's really people that are doing that. Insane. Jermaine with the Super Chat. Unk, thank you. And Tolly for the WrestleMania talk. Oh, good deal, man. Uh, you know, Tolly and I are, are just wrestling fans from way back, man. So we had to get off script a little bit and discuss WrestleMania, which I think one of the best WrestleManias in the history of WrestleMania, if not the best. One of those things I just don't understand, Same. but I don't, I never uh, hate on what, I, what other people like. when like. I walked in here, y'all were cheering for soccer. I just ordered my Ralphie and joined in. <laughs> exactly. I didn't try to fight it. Exactly. Didn't know what the hell was going on, but when y'all cheered, I cheered. Mr. Hillsman with another super chat. He's back again. Shout out to the DMVR folks behind the scenes. Appreciate you, man. Love it. There's a lot of them. There is a lot of them. Speaking of, do uh, you see the social social squad got a little <laughs> shine today on yeah. the Denver Sports Podcast? Yeah. Good for them. How'd that show go, Alyssa? Oh, so <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, Rev BJ Nelson with the Super Chat. Praying favor over on the buffs. DMVR Neely RTP. Well off crew. And a special blessings on RK, hey. LOL, JK. Wait, JK, so <laughs> special blessing or no? <laughs> I'm going to special bless you. You turned down you three golf invites, man. Yeah, he typed it out. Thank you. I won't curse at you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We don't need that jinx again. <laughs> uh, Atlanta, stay focused and informed. Neely, who will be the breakout D lineman this season? <laughs> Give me Chi. All right. Mm, it's tough, though. Mm. I was about to walk back on that one. All Think right, about it, it first. Leave it there. Yeah, leave it there. All leave right. it there. Big Teasy super sticker. A pixelated hippo chomps on a one-up. <laughs> like a that? one-up mushroom from Mario? Oh, like, like bling. Is that what that oh, is? Oh, okay. I think so. Yeah. It's pixelated, so, you know, like yeah. an 8-bit. We have to use our imagination. So. Yeah. Like Imagination it. Station. 
And then final one. Oh, it is Friday. We were supposed I to forgot. get Alyssa Cam. I forgot. She forgot, and she's uh she's not gonna. <laughs> Make good on it. She's gonna do it. No. That's uh, next Friday. Next Friday. We got a no thanks. Thanks for yeah. no thanks. <laughs> next Friday. Uh, this killer is outfit last on. One. I know. I was gonna say killer yeah. outfit. Y'all, y'all are missing it. I did get uh, ready today too. Dang it. Good try, Big TZ. We'll uh, we'll next try and get Friday. you on Friday. This is a lot of fun. It is, man. Uh, we're ten thumbs up away from four hundred. Let's try and get those as we close out the show here. Oh, we can get that, man. Ten. Come on, get the thumbs up going. Uh, tomorrow, that's the end of week three, man. We're on to week four next week. And then after that, it's spring game week. Yeah. Next yeah. week will be a legendary week in the history of this show. Break it down. It will. Uh, I can't tell you. I can't um, tell him yet. We'll okay. tell you after this. Yeah. It's going to be fun, guys. We'll see you then. Sco Buffs. Sco Buffs. You. We all silly like the mayor. 